This is Twit. What are IoT seatbelts, Sam? So IoT is probably a bit of a misnomer here. Um, basically, they're um, smarter seatbelts. So what, what Volvo is doing here with these new seatbelts that are coming next year on the new EX60 um, is they're taking advantage of the sensor, the various sensors they have on the car um, and trying to better judge the situation uh, both outside the vehicle and inside the vehicle. Um, for, for some time now, most uh, seatbelts in modern cars have already, um, they've, they've already had some smarts built into them so that they um, adjust, um, you know, depending on the, uh, the impact force and that's, various that's other almost things. mechanical for, though, right? Like if it's leaned mm, forward or well um, it originally it was, but yeah. now it's not. Oh, you know, okay. So, so seatbelts, uh, modern seatbelts in cars for the last twenty-ish years have all had pretensioners on them. So, when there's an impact, um, the original, the first ones actually used uh, a pyrotechnic device to retract the seatbelt. <laughs> an explosive. And, and, yeah, <laughs> uh, to pull pull you back oh, tight. Man. You know, so you didn't hit the steering wheel. Right. Um, and, you know, that was a good thing. Um, yeah. You know, but might it was, have, it might was have broken fairly, some bones, but at least you're alive. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, it, it wasn't that it wasn't that uh, powerful okay. Okay. Um, or at least it wasn't intended to be some, you know, sometimes it could, but it was better than the alternative. Um, but it was, you know, kind of a one shot thing. And, um, you know, there was there was no adjustment for different body sizes the where you were sitting relative to the steering wheel so you know depending on how tall you are uh you might be you know if you're uh, shorter you're going to be sitting closer to the steering wheel it didn't have adjustments for that so what they're doing now with these new um these new systems is they're taking advantage of looking at you know where's your seat positioned um you know um looking at uh using the driver monitor system uh you know, because a lot of modern cars now have a an infrared camera, like your BMW does, that is looking at you to make you know to check that you're watching the road, um, and uh, you know hands on the steering wheel, various other things, but also looking outside, um, looking at what is the direction of the impact, for example. Oh, wow. Um, you know what you know you know it knows. Okay, I'm gonna have uh, you know what what's called a, a small offset impact. You know if, if somebody crosses the center line and you have a glancing blow, that's a different impact than a direct head-on impact. And so it responds differently based on all of these different factors, and it, it adjusts the amount of pretensioning. Um, you know based on on your uh, your 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 size, your body type, um, and the type of impact that's going on wow that's kind of cool yeah this, this and, is you know, a this video is, from volvo uh, yeah of a, and you know volvo, of people, volvo invented the three-point seat belt back in the 1950s oh really yeah okay. they they create they were the first the, ones the shoulder to do it. shoulder yeah, plus uh lap belt. yeah didn't it just involve a, a physical mechanism involving some pendulum type action that when the money that was that changed? was the er, that was the early thing yeah it was a, a pendulum type action uh but now you know and then they went to a pyrotechnic system uh and now they're going to an electromechanical system that can adjust the amount of tensioning force on the seat belt automatically based on all these other factors this is this is an example of how everything now you know there's cameras there's sensors there's radar every, there's so much information now yeah, uh, and it makes sense for the auto to use it. I mean, it's expensive yeah. though. Doesn't it add greatly to the cost? Um, it it does. I mean, we're putting these sensors on the car anyway. So what oh, okay. it, what we're seeing here it's just using is, the information you know, we're finding new there. ways to use the sensors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know. Okay. So we've got we put these sensors on the car. What else can we do with them to enhance right. safety? Um, and so they're using it in a bunch of different ways. Uh, another example for, for Volvo is what they call their driver understanding system. So, um, Leo, you remember back in 2017, I think, when I first took you for a ride in the Cadillac CT6 with Super yeah. Cruise. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it has that infrared camera on the steering it was, column. It was looking that, at my eyes. I yeah, had to yeah. cover yeah, my eyes to, to get it to warn me. Yeah. And that yeah. was a fairly simple system that all it did was look at your your eye gaze and head position right uh just to make sure you know are you I'm watching the attention. road yeah. yeah yeah and if you were looking if you look away from the road for more than a few seconds it would alert you and it would start to if you didn't respond it would start to disengage super cruise well what 
uh, it would also all those things. it also shook the seat. Yeah, and, yeah, it was and a tried to seat tension too. the seatbelt. It was like it was shaking you to wake up. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, what, what Volvo is doing now is what they call driver understanding system. So they've done a lot of research, uh, you know, cause one of the things that happens when you use these systems like super cruise or FSD, you know, where you're supposed to be watching the road, if you're on a long road trip, what sometimes, what can often happen is your eyes might be on the road, but you're not actually attentive. Your, your brain's you know? not there. And, and this is, this is one of the problems is, you know, you start to get that thousand yard stare. So your, your eyes are pointed towards the road, but you're not ready to take control if you need to. Mm -hmm. And so what, what Volvo, you know, they've got uh, some anthropologists that have been, and behavioral scientists that have been looking at this and trying to model um, human behavior to under, better understand uh, not just on where your eyes are looking at any moment in time, but also looking for patterns of, you know, are you occasionally glancing over at the mirrors, at the screen? You know, um, you know it, are there other signs that you are actually alert uh, rather than just completely zoned out? Your eyes may be open, but you're not, you're, you're not uh, really how there. How would it know? Your pupils are dilating or you're uh, drooling? Yeah, I mean, it's, look, <laughs> it's, it's looking for a variety of factors. You know, like I said, it's looking for eye motion this you know, is, as this well is as head AI, motion. This is AI, isn't it? This is AI. It, it, this part, is of, part of it is AI, But yes. that can happen even without driver assistance. I remember you know, passing mm -hmm. an exit on the highway because I was just sort of spaced out listening All to music, the time. thinking about yeah. other things. All the time. It, it yeah, and, and and there's you know, an increasing number of vehicles that, uh, like a lot of Toyotas, a lot of Hyundai and Kia vehicles now, um, you know, they have, even though they don't have a hands-free system like Super Cruise or Blue Cruise uh, or FSD, they, uh, they do have that um, driver monitor camera that's just looking for distraction. Yeah. Um, just, just trying to, you know, make sure that you are paying attention to the road. And if you're, if you're not, then it will, you know, it'll start to provide some alerts and try to get your attention. My are 2016 they, are, are, Prius yells at me if it thinks that I'm not paying attention, but it gets it wrong. Like if I'm on a certain well, road in Yosemite that's highly curvy, my, it yeah. will constantly my, yell at me. Yeah, the BMW, early systems were very crude. My but, BMW yells at me if I pick my nose. Uh, well, it, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> it and I, I Video apologize. It didn't it, happen, Leo. Yeah, yeah. It was a scratch. It was a scratch. <laughs> uh, it yells at me because I guess it. I don't know. It's really interesting. Uh, how... My wife yells at me if I do that. So. <laughs> yeah, it should. You know, I've seen some, some recent research that picking your nose can lead to dementia. Yeah, I know. Don't go too far up there. Yeah. That's basically the. Uh... So um, okay. So our cars safer. They're safer. We know there's uh, they're safe. they're absolutely they're they are absolutely safer for occupants than they are ever deaths, have been. Are there oh not so good for pedestrians? They're huge. Right. They run down all yes. the people outside them. It, yeah, if you I look at the by data, these trucks all the time where the hood is higher than my head. If you if you if you look at the data from the last decade, you know, of, since the 1960s, we've been on a steady downward trend for traffic fatality rates, except until the last decade. And what what we've hap what's happened is in the last decade, the occupant fatalities have continued to decline, but pedestrian and cyclist fatalities have increased yeah. because everybody's getting into these giant trucks and SUVs and they can't see people. And and you've got you know worse visibility and um, it's it's really the it's, cars it's are terrible. bigger and heavier yeah. too. So mm -hmm. if there's contact, the contact is more likely to be destructive. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I saw a headline the other day of I don't remember where some girl got hit by a car on her bike and she died. And that hit me like emotionally because I got hit by a car on my bike when I was 14 years old. But it was one of those like big 1980s Buicks. So when I couldn't avoid the car, I went on its hood and I rolled off on the other side and didn't get run over or bounced too hard or something. So, um I mean, I didn't see now the car. Like the car didn't see me. Yeah. But they're now like, I wouldn't. I would just yeah. end up under the car, Just's and then right. I would yeah. have no chance. Yeah. 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 Now you get you know people getting hit by cyber trucks and Raptors, and you know, and, yeah. and yeah, I know other... people who are buying SUVs just to, for defensive reasons because they just right. everybody. Yeah. Well, like it's, car it's, on the road. it's protecting the people on the inside, but it's killing people on the outside. Mm -hmm. oh, what What stupid. do you make of the you know the, the 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 kind of fighting over whether Tesla is safer than other cars or less safe? I've seen data suggesting it gets into more accidents. And, and the, why is that? You know, the, 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 pro the problem is... I'll tell you why, um, Larry. It's people like you. It's well, Tesla drivers. Well, that's, we probably, the that's problem. the answer I'm actually listening to. <laughs> yeah. That's what we, I wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah, I was embarrassed to drive a BMW for a long time because 
BMW yeah, there was a, are the well, worst. Don't get me. Don't get into the political <laughs> part about it. I'm no, very but I, I've, I've noticed that issue with like you know driving with Teslas on the road, and with all due respect to my friends who drive Teslas, <laughs> I always noticed there was something kind of absent about the way it was getting driven. It almost seemed like the drivers had like just turned over a little bit to too, too much control to the yeah. to the yeah. to the car and just sort of expect that the car will make it fine it's like there's other people on the road we're busy trying to like merge with you we need you know you know we need you to be on the ball and yeah, but i'm uh, curious if sam knows why it is that the the you know what what's behind this these reports so so we've you know the the problem is trying to get valid data to get you know yeah. apples to apples data because one you know one of the things uh you know tesla has often put out reports saying oh our cars get into you know one quarter as many act crashes as as other cars but what they don't tell you is they're you know it's the, it's the classic thing of you know tell me which side of the argument you're on and i'll give you the statistics to prove you're right mm -hmm. in in this case um you know tesla um we think we don't know for sure because they don't actually provide any context they just give a headline number and nothing else but most likely what they're doing is they are comparing the rate of crashes of their vehicles to the entire vehicle population and there's 290 million registered vehicles in the united states with an average age of um almost 13 years now oh, okay and most of those don't have advanced data systems mm -hmm. and, and other safety features Maybe lock brakes. Um, you know and if you yeah. compared Teslas, you know, which, you know, 90% of all the Teslas have been built since 2017. So the last eight years uh, are actually probably more than 90%. Yeah. Um, and they all have these ADAS features. Well, if you compared them only to the population of vehicles built in the same time period, and especially more expensive premium vehicles that tend to have these types of features, the numbers would be very, very different. Interesting. Um, because, you know, most, a lot of the crashes are happening with older vehicles. Um, and, you know, when when studies have been done trying to make those comparisons like for like comparisons um they have found that teslas tend to get into more crashes yeah. and while it's hard to determine the exact causation um the you know the there is certainly a correlation with use of features like autopilot and fsd where the drivers are not as attentive and and tesla drivers in general because they tend to be more tech forward tend to be more trusting of the technology and so they're more likely to utilize it perhaps beyond what its true capabilities would justify i just uh, always felt like it was an abdication like they it's not necessarily that they were using the active features but that they were so convinced about the car being the better driver and that the car will take care of them that they yeah. stop being as is involved yeah. with what their well, role and, was with the car's the operation that's true about 98 percent of the time but it doesn't take doesn't take yeah. much to kill you well and and the thing is the vast majority of driving we don't have crashes you know and right. this is one of the one of the one of the problems around automotive safety has been the way that it's been talked about for so long everybody likes to trot out this you know 94 94 of crashes are caused by human error which is true up to a point 90 94 percent of crashes human error is the last in a chain of events that led to that crash mm -hmm. What you don't hear is that, um, you know, we drive 3.2, 3.3 trillion miles a year in the United States alone. That's wow. trillion with a T. And we have about one fatal crash for every 100 million miles of driving. For all crashes, it's about six and a half million crashes a year, which works out to roughly about one crash every half a million miles. Mm -hmm. For average drivers driving 15,000 miles a year, good. that's one crash every 30 years yeah. on average. So we, as much as we, you know, humans are often the, the last in a chain of events that lead to a crash, we actually are really good at this incredibly complex task. Yeah. Driving is very hard, but we are actually much better at it than we give ourselves credit for. Is it mm. harder than hitting a baseball? Um, uh, yeah, I would say it is. <laughs> okay, you know because because there's so many more variables. That's a that's a silly. By the way, my my homemade bumper sticker says. I knew he was crazy. I didn't know he was dangerous. Oh, I like I've it. known he was crazy for a long yeah. time. Yeah. I think I'm going to send that to Donald Trump. He could put it on the back of his Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's getting rid of that, though. Yeah, apparently he thought, yeah, he's going to sell it. Yeah. Is he selling his Tesla? Yeah, apparently. yeah he said this week he's going to sell it. Yeah. I, I, I'd is, love to own that Tesla. I think that'd be a great collector's this item. Is, this is a great 
first of all, I doubt very much Donald Trump has ever driven a car in right. his life, right? right. <laughs> or walked in the grass with bare feet. Yeah, I've decided that that would explain that. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Benito. Before, before we move on from cars, I want to ask Sam something about modern sure. cars right now. Like, why are the headlights getting brighter and brighter? Um, to try to better illuminate the scene around you. Um, you know, not, we've, not we've to gone blind from me everywhere I go. All the better to see you with my like, well, so The ones that see me from behind, they're, they're blinding the me into my mirrors. The ones that are coming yeah. towards me are blinding me ahead of me. It's like, it makes, I, mean, I feel like it's got, more dangerous. Yeah, I mean, well, lighting, lighting technology has, has changed a lot. You know, we've gone from incandescents to halogens, um, you know, and now we're using LED lights, headlights, um, and they are much brighter. Um, one of the problems that has happened, uh, particularly in the U.S., is um, our lighting regulations did not keep up with it. Um, you know, for a long time in Europe, they've allowed adaptive lighting systems. So um, the you know the the lights used on a lot of European cars. If you if you're familiar with like uh, DLP projectors, they work a lot like that. Um, you know where um, you've got the 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 lighting elements and there's basically mirrors that create the lighting pattern um, and it can adjust um, in real time, you know, using the, the cameras and, and other sensors on the vehicle, it can adjust the lighting pattern. So as you're driving, as a car is coming up towards you or you're coming up behind another car, it will automatically lower the beams, um, you know, so that you're not blinding other cars. Mm -hmm. um, they only recently changed that regulation in the U.S. Uh, and so far, the first manufacturer to actually implement adaptive headlights like that in the U.S. market is Rivian. Uh, That's what they have um, They have Nature. they have Something the mechanism. Like they yeah. they have not. I don't believe they've no, actually they implemented just it. it. Very recently. Okay. Like maybe, yeah, maybe they have. I think that's a funny thing because I think my BMW also has it, but it's not a lot, it's not on. Yeah, and uh, a lot of European cars have the hardware, they use but they haven't US. enabled it in software yeah. yet. Yeah. Like yeah. the last time I was driving a Rivian a few months back, you know, I was driving at night, and as a car was approaching me, you know, I could see the, you know, like it, the high beams were on, you know, it was illuminating the entire scene in front of me, and all of a sudden it was basically a notch in the upper left hand corner. That's so cool. Um, you could see the lights go down where that car was so i wasn't so it wasn't just so you wouldn't blind the driver but yeah. you could still see everything going on we yeah. got we have to take a break i have lots more stuff we'll do a, a speed round because we're almost done but mm -hmm. there's so many big stories this week uh great to have you sam a bull sam car guy uh what's the best self-driving vehicle on the market today uh, there is no self-driving vehicle on the market today. Okay. Thank you. You cannot, you cannot buy an actual car that will drive itself without human supervision. What's the best, next best thing? Uh, GM Super Cruise System. Okay. Hey, thank you for watching this little snippet from our big show, the News Roundtable, This Week in Tech. I'm Leo Laporte. Each week we cover the week's tech news, in-depth analysis, but it's also fun and engaging. You'll find it at twit.tv along with all of our shows. And if you want more, just hit the subscribe button. And uh, we'll be sure to bring you a lot more great content. Thanks for listening.